Shrinkflation, beware of shrinkage in the economic washout. Okay, so this one isn't a media trope. It's a real-life trope. However, for you and me, it is likely just as much of a peeve. The definition found on Wikipedia is. Quote. Shrinkflation, also known as the grocery shrink ray, deflation or package downsizing, is the process of items shrinking in size or quantity, or even sometimes reformulating or reducing quality, while their prices remain the same or increase. The word is a portmanteau of the words shrink and inflation. End quote. Investopedia's definition covers a bit more ground. Quote. Shrinkflation is the practice of reducing the size of a product while maintaining its sticker price. Raising the price per given amount is a strategy employed by companies, mainly in the food and beverage industries, to stealthily boost profit margins or maintain them in the face of rising input costs. Shrinkflation is also referred to as package downsizing in business and academic research. A less common usage of this term may refer to a macroeconomic situation where the economy is contracting while also experiencing a rising price level. End quote. Bottom line, your chocolate bar is a few grams lighter, your bag of chips has less chips and more air in it, and your laundry detergent is missing a few fluid ounces. No big deal, right? Wrong. Amid rising prices and supply chain disruptions, the supplies you can actually get a hold of, just aren't lasting as long. No. You aren't imagining it. It's a triple whammy that's making sure your dollars just aren't stretching as far as they used to. In fact, the United States inflation rate hit 8.5% in March, the highest seen since 1981. Business Reports website recently published an article titled, Companies Shrinking Product Sizes to Deal with Inflation. It states, quote, It comes in waves. We happen to be in a tidal wave at the moment because of inflation, says Edgar Dworsky, a consumer advocate and former assistant attorney general in Massachusetts who has documented shrinkflation on his Consumer World website for decades. Dworsky says shrinkflation appeals to manufacturers because they know customers will notice price increases but won't keep track of net weights or small details, like the number of sheets on a roll of toilet paper. Companies can also employ tricks to draw attention away from downsizing, like marking smaller packages with bright new labels that draw shoppers' eyes. End quote. Shrinkflation is not a new phenomenon, nor is it uniquely an American problem. However, it is receiving a lot of attention these days. As stated in a report published by the United Kingdom's Office of National Statistics in 2019, quote, We identified 206 products that shrank in size and 79 that increased in size between September 2015 and June 2017. There was no trend in the frequency of size changes over this period, which included the EU referendum. The majority of products experiencing size changes were food products and in 2016, we estimated that between 1% and 2.1% of food products in our sample shrank in size, while between 0.3% and 0.7% got bigger. We also observed that prices tended not to change when products changed size, consistent with the idea that some products are undergoing shrinkflation. End quote. As mentioned previously, rising prices, falling availability, and reduced sizes in this pandemic-affected economy have many people noticing the shrinkflation now more than ever. Dollar Tree, is a prime example of what I am referring to. After 30 plus years of business, the bargain oriented store has raised the price of its items from one US dollar to a buck and a quarter. To be fair, this is still a bargain. Having said that, eagle eyed shoppers have noticed that while per unit costs have increased, the amount they get for certain items have decreased. Items marked value or family pack have less volume in them, be they cleaning products, toilet paper, candy, etc. I can already hear some of you saying that reduced package sizes and smaller portions are good things. Less packaging means less waste and quite a few of us could stand to lose some weight anyway. All of this might be true, if prices were decreased proportionally to the shrinkage of the product. Give us 10% less soda, charge us 10% less money. Give us 20% less soap. Well, imagine if we all wash 20% less often. Hey stinky! That will be fun, on a crowded bus. Now if you will excuse me, I'm going to eat my triple-decker gut buster cheeseburger between two double-glazed donuts. Go America!